you have to appreciate two things. First, I'm gonna have a couple of exciting things coming soon after this video. And I completely powered down my Zigbee network so I could run these tests. <music> Hey guys, how are you doing? If you were paying attention, ITF has released a new Zigbee coordinator. And it's not, not a Zigbee a bridge, it is a son of Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle plus. I mean, they could have just named it something interesting. But anyway, it's here, it's more powerful, and I'm about to test it versus the coordinators I already recommended in the past. It's gonna be exciting, right? Well, you probably want to watch this before you make your final decision about purchasing one of these. It's not the first time that IT guys are actually offering a Zigbee coordinator. Previously, they took my trusty CC2531 coordinator and they've offered it pre-flushed on IT store. It is still available on their store and I would recommend it to anyone being curious about Zigbee and just wanted to try out. Ever since, they've expanded with the Zigbee range, offering Zigbee sensors, Zigbee switches, and a dedicated Zigbee hub that works with uh, eWilling app. Something that got promptly hacked by community and can run as more tunnel. There's gonna be a couple of videos in there for you if you wanna check it out later. But now we have an improved son of branded Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle that they advertised for Raspberry Pi 3 for anyone ru running Home Assistant or Zigbee 2 MQTT, including me. I do not run the Home Assistant, but I do run Node-RED with Zigbee 2 MQTT. So I've decided to pitch it against the, well, now dated CC2531, which I was losing at the beginning, and a premium one uh, from Electrolama, the ZZH coordinator. But first, we're gonna do what I usually do. We're gonna open it up and have a look inside and inside the case as well. It's a USB Zigbee 3.0 dongle that you can plug into Raspberry Pi or a computer that you are running your home automation. It's almost bulletproof with aluminum enclosure, but it's easy to actually get inside. Now the antenna itself, it's actually pretty long and this is the antenna comparing to ZH coordinator that I do have. Let's take a peek inside. And I'm gonna need my mini DSO ES121 for that. If you wanna know more, the link is in a corner. It's actually pretty easy to get inside. Just remove two screws from antenna end and the whole device slides out. On the front face, you will have CC2652P, a flow control switch and two buttons reset and boot. There is also a dedicated header, so you could actually start programming your own firmware, I guess? Yeah, this is the flow switch, by the way. And the other side contains, well, all the names for the ground and testing pants, and that's pretty much it. So let's finish this sightseeing, put it together, and, well, let's start playing with it. So the first good news is pretty much plug and play. So if you have Zigbee 2 MQTT installed, you can just slot in into your Raspberry Pi, providing you're not running a desk Pi like me, with, uh, which has USB ports obscured by the connector. And this thing is huge and it's gonna cover all the ports on USB, which means you'll have to get an extension lead. That's fine, because extension lead is good for uh, interference. More on that in a second. So if you plug it in, all you really have to do is just run a command to discover connected USB devices. That's ls slash dev slash tty and star to find everything that is currently connected to your USB ports and edit your configuration file. The second good news is that even though it comes with slightly dated firmware and uh, the firmware shipped on this particular device was from January this year, uh, well, it's actually not that hard to upgrade. I've actually upgraded the firmware myself, just so I could record a guide. So all you have to do is just download a couple of things. First, you're gonna need a separate driver for the coordinator itself. I'm gonna link everything in the associated article. Then you need Flash Programmer 2 from Texas Instrument. You'll need an account uh, to register to download, but the, uh, the Flasher tool is free. And lastly, you're gonna need a correct coordinator firmware, which you can get from GitHub. Again, everything's gonna be linked for you. 
Then it's a matter of plugging everything in. Just remember to take the sort of out of the box and hold the button, the boot button uh, while you're plugging it in and select the correct device from your drop-down list. And the correct device for this particular toy is obviously the CC, I forgot, which is CC2562P, if I'm correct. Click Erase, flash the firmware and verify, and within a couple of seconds, you're gonna have a new firmware installed. But don't do it just yet. Again, we're gonna come back to it in a second. I've promised you some tests. I did take my CC2531 coordinator with antenna hack. There's gonna be a video about this hack in here if you're interested. I also took my Electrorama ZZH coordinator, which is also uh, CC2562R based, so slightly different chip, and obviously the latest device from Sonofa. So I had this test in my mind in which I would run all three coordinators, the ZZH, the CC2531, and the latest uh, Son of Zigbee dongle uh, alongside, and each time I would record the values reported by an end device so I could basically measure somehow a performance. I don't have a specific RF tools that I could use to measure the interference, etc., etc. So I guess we all have to rely on this. But this is where my experience with this dongle, well, it goes downhill. It was very difficult to actually pair anything. In my experiments with different firmwares, I went back to the January release, which was the original firmware flashed on this device, then back to the new one, and each time I had actually problems connecting any devices. And I have lots of Zigbee devices. Even some of branded buttons weren't really pairing and I could not figure out why, especially that the same issue wasn't present for my trusted CC2531 or ZZH. Very bizarre. In the end, I've settled for IKEA button, which was reliable and, well, I could conduct my tests. So, the testing condition. I've took the coordinator and the Raspberry Pi and a desk Pi outside to conservatory, so it was running the and interfered by anything else. Now, in my test, I've picked seven different locations that would be the most representative for everyday use of Zigbee devices, especially end devices. And then I would record the link quality reported into a graph so you could kind of have a comparison between different coordinators. And the seven locations that I've picked first was a one and a half meter from the coordinator near the computers and the Raspberry Pi itself, a bit of Wi-Fi interference, just to see what's going to be the link quality. Second measurement is the best link quality I could achieve next to the antenna. Then we have in the same room about three meter distance from the coordinator. Number four is in a different room across the structural wall, so a big obstacle, uh, and approximately five meters from the coordinator. Number five, it's five meters from the coordinator, but keeping the line of sight. Number six, it's the most demanding one because I went all the way upstairs to have extra floor, and I was on the furthest possible uh, side of the house, and yeah, that was number six. And the last position was slightly closer, about five, meter, uh, about five to six meters, and it was also upstairs. As you can see on the presented graphs, the Sonoff is really taking advantage of that bigger antenna and the gain of 20 decibels that is included into the microcontroller. I can't measure exactly how that gain translates into what you have available on the antenna, but comparing to all the coordinators, it actually is less impressive than it sounds on the paper. Even the CC2531, pretty much outdated right now, did quite well. And even though it can't support as many devices, the range was, well, decent and for the most part, it handled every single situation okay. Which leads me to conclusion about the range. Specifically, I didn't run the range test in here because when it comes to Zigbee and the mesh network's range don't matter as much. You could spend extra money on a coordinator that is worth 40 to 50 pounds and your range will improve only a couple of meters. Or you could just buy a router device like Son of Zigbee Basic for like $10 and probably extend your entire network by a half. 
and this is why it doesn't make much sense to compare their actual range on the individual coordinators because at the end of the day you really want to have a really strong mesh to handle all your devices. From tests, back to the reality. Sonoff may offer you a better on paper coordinator right now, however, there are some problems. I already mentioned the pairing problem that is persistent across different devices from different brands. Now, they shot themselves in a the foot a little bit because they rely on the coordinator's firmware being supplied by the community. Now, it's going to be up to community to address those issues and obviously that's going to depend on the uptake of the actual device. If the device is popular, then obviously working on the firmware dedicated to a son of uh, Zigbee 3.0 is going to be greater. However, it is hard for me to recommend this device right now without proper support. Although I have to give it to some of that at $10, this is really, really tempting. And as far as I'm concerned, they already sold out in a shop. So if you're not too worried about spending $10 on a device you might not use, uh, start hunting now, get one of these and keep it in the drawer until the firmware gets a little bit better. After all, it could turn into a pretty good budget coordinator. Until then, if you just want to try things out, I would still strongly recommend you either to go for a budget option, if it's your first time, like CC2531, even though it's dated, it's still capable and it's very compatible with other devices. If you don't mind spending a little bit more, then take a look at the ZZH Electrolama, which uh, costs around $30, but it's definitely worth it for the ease of use and compatibility uh, with other devices. I'd like to thank Sona for sending me one of these early so I could, well, roast them. And I hope that's gonna change in the future so I could truly recommend one of these. As for now, guys, you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell you that I do not have a schedule, so if you're interested in those pretty boxes here and a little bit more information about these, then you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain that. But if you want to see a snippet of my uh, future work and what's coming up next, it's best to follow me on any given social media that is currently working, unlike Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram. And uh, yeah, pick a social network, follow me there and keep in touch. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and see you next time. Bye.